Well, 2023 has been a defining year for artificial intelligence. Investors have poured money into stocks like market leader NVIDIA and Microsoft over its AI plays. Now, Wall Street has certainly been bullish on some of the bigger players. And in a note titled, Why AI is Not a Bubble, Goldman Sachs disputes any signs of this trend popping, saying, quote, we believe we are still in the relatively early stages of a new technology cycle that's likely to lead to further outperformance. Well, for more on AI, I'm joined by Jay Jacobs, U.S. Head of Thematics and Active Equity ETFs at BlackRock for this week's ETF report sponsored by Invesco QQQ. Good to have you on the show, Jay. So as we've seen here, a lot of people are wondering if since it is so early, trying to determine how can we, we can even tell if it's overhyped or underhyped at this point. What are your big takeaways here? I think the big takeaway here is that most of AI uh stock market moves this year have been really concentrated in just a few names. Some of these mega cap tech names that, to be fair, are you know massive AI platforms and really some of the pioneers in the space. But this is a 15 to $20 trillion theme over the coming decades. This is going to massively upend several aspects of the economy, not just technology, but if we look at healthcare, if we look at services, we look at productivity, it's going to have a really incredible impact. And so be, being so narrowly focused on just a few mega cap names really misses uh, kind of the breadth of the opportunity within AI in the coming years. And you do note that it's really also about the, the value chain of companies that will also benefit from AI. And you, and you put them in a couple of different buckets here, developers, enablers, and beneficiaries. So when you're thinking of uh, sort of the, the sorts of industries that come under each of these, which ones are you focused on? Yeah, so a lot of those mega cap tech names are really the developers. They are building the cutting edge AI platforms like ChatGPT that we think are really going to be uh, kind of leading AI platforms. But when we think about the next stage of growth for AI, um, a lot of roads lead through enablers like semiconductor manufacturers, people who build the GPUs and the CPUs and the networking services and the digital infrastructure that's really going to power this massive amount of compute that's needed to power these AI platforms. And then finally, if we look a little bit further downstream, I think we have to look at who are some of the early adopters of AI, who are incorporating this into their products, for example, we see a lot of travel companies right now are using AI as ways to make kind of recommendations on what your itinerary should look like if you want to take a you know a fall trip. But that's just the tip of the iceberg when we see other use cases. And those early users and those early adopters are likely to really see some uh, uh, kind of massive benefit from adopting AI faster than the market. So when investors are thinking of this, because initially, obviously, it came through some of the, the biggest tech names, but because it will touch so many different industries, how should investors be approaching this, especially as we look at ETFs that would really help them capitalize on this when we still really don't know exactly who the big players are all going to end up being in these early stages? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first step is investors have to understand what exposure do I already have to AI today? Um, we looked across thousands of financial advisor portfolios and saw that in people's stock uh, allocations, they had about 20% exposure to AI names already. So there's already a very big allocation to AI just by owning kind of market cap weighted indexes, again, through those mega cap tech names that have, big, have been big uh, beneficiaries this year. So the next step beyond just kind of measuring what you have today is really you know, thinking through what are the downstream impacts of AI? Who are the beneficiaries over the next 12 months, 36 months, and ultimately 10 years? That's where we look further down the uh, the supply chain here. This is where we look at those enablers with a real focus on semiconductors through our SOX ETF, SOXX, or looking at some of those users that are adopting AI technology in the early stages. All of this getting captured in our IRBO, uh, Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. And for some people who are a little bit more a little bit more cautious, you do have some of these these buffer uh, ETFs on deck as well, looking at IVV, IVVM, IVVB breakdown how those would really benefit investors as they try and approach this, but perhaps in case they're a little bit more risk averse. One of the biggest opportunities in the market today is not necessarily trying to pick the next big winner. It's just getting invested. Uh, if you look at average allocations across advisor portfolios, we have seen the largest allocation to cash since we've been measuring this. It's about 6% of a 60-40 portfolio is in cash right now. So bringing that money off the sidelines is a really important step towards wealth creation for any investor. But we know that not every investor is going to be looking at high growth opportunities or necessarily wants to have full equity market risk. So that's why we brought out our buffer ETFs, IVVM and IVVB, which use option strategies that are fairly commonly used in, in, uh, in financial services 
but rapid in the efficiency of an ETF. The benefit being it provides a measure of downside protection if the markets sell off in exchange for capping some of the upside if markets begin to rally. And just quickly, Jay, as you look at some of the fundamentals of these companies that are all sort of touting their, their AI possibilities from this point, what are some of the key things that you look for when you're deciding who's really going to have the longevity in this space? Well, we really look for kind of the purity within these names. So are these companies truly committed to AI? Are they building AI platforms? Are they enablers of AI platforms? Or are they already integrating it into their products? I think there's a risk out there that some companies and names are talking about AI in a way that's really more on the marketing side of things. You really need to focus on who are the pure play companies that are really driving this theme forward. That's where the opportunity is. And that's why we really like semiconductors and uh, kind of the broader ecosystem with IRBO. I do appreciate you cutting through the noise there because I know a lot of investors wondering, you know, with this fear of missing out what they should be looking at. So good to have a level headed approach here. A big thank you to Jay Jacobs, U.S. head of thematic and active equity ETFs at BlackRock. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much.